But other than that, this plane flies. I, I didn't expect this to go well, honestly. Look at this. This is perfect. This is absolutely a stupid experiment. Now, two weeks ago, I did something pretty stupid. Well, I do something stupid all the time, so... Um, anyway, I tried to fit fighter jet engines onto airliners. This right here is the F-14 engine, the General Electric F-110, which you'd think is quite powerful, you know, with its afterburners and everything. But it turns out there's lots of noise for not a lot of power when you strap it onto an A330. In fact, you would need like six of these engines strapped onto the A330 to even get the airplane airborne. And um, no, nope, it won't move or take off. I'm not kidding. Yes, most people overestimate how powerful these fighter jets are. Look, we're going full power right now. This thing is barely moving. Obviously, that's also because the F-14 is kind of like one-sixth of the size of the A330. But today, I decided to turn things around and do some modification on the most powerful fighter jet in the world, the F-35 right here. Look at it. I mean, seeing it in real life, hearing it in real life is just absolutely insane. We have a single engine here, though, which is able to provide 28,000 pounds of thrust without afterburners, and there's 15,000 additional thrusts with the afterburner on. This thing is quite powerful now, but let's see. I mean, the 737 right here is also a lot bigger. It has two CFM-56 engines, which are able to provide pretty much the equal amount of power of the single engine of the F-35. What we're doing is absolutely stupid, but can you fit airliner engines on a fighter jet and what will happen? That's what we'll find out. And while we already have a bit of an issue here, see the good thing about the Pratt & Whitney F-135 that's, you know, built into this plane is that it's built into the plane and not like built onto the wing, which obviously is great for aerodynamics. Here are the air inlets of that engine. And well, the main fuselage is practically an engine. And the reason why jet engines on airliners are much more powerful is because they're much bigger. I mean, look, this is just uh, insane. Great. So how about we put like the en these engines here? Does that make sense? I think it makes sense. Great. We've, uh, we've, we are significantly improving uh, this poor little fighter jet. Oh, okay. Looking good. Um, I have now realistically done the simulation here as well. Right. So, all right. So, I mean, we've done some improvements to this plane. We've made it pretty much double the power. Now, yes, this is a fighter jet. It's supposed to be stealthy. And these engines here are not stealthy. <laughs> Yeah, we've kind of ruined the whole concept of this fighter jet. Uh, but hey, we use a bit less fuel. We have very much worse aerodynamics, though, because like half of our planes is engines. And also the point of the F-35 engine is also that it does some thrust vectoring. So it helps you be agile, move about. Um, this plane can't do that anymore, but let's see if we can take off. We now have a very powerful airplane. We should be able to, at least. All right, come on. Double the power on the F-35. Oh my God, and you can feel that. Jesus Christ, this airplane accelerates quite quickly. But it doesn't sound as crazy anymore. We have no afterburner that creates extra sound here. This is just a boring old 737 engine. That's made to not annoy people. There we go. We can take off with the F-35. And we are actually sort of maneuverable. Put the landing gear up. Let's probably see what we can pull. Dude, the power on this plane is great. Uh... This plane just doesn't really do lots of, for, like, going vertical. This plane is not very maneuverable. Yes, we, like, this, uh, for some reason, works pretty well here doing, like, aileron rolls. But other than that, pulling up doesn't really work well. Something that does work well is actually speeding up, but there is a limit. Oh my god, camera. See, the thing about these engines here is that they're very big, and they're not very aerodynamic, and that means they'll get in the way of going supersonic speeds. I mean, look, it's as big as the fuselage. And so that means our top speed is limited. So that is probably how fast we could ever go. Mach 0.94. Which is not necessarily impressive now. But something we can do on this plane is shoot down other planes. Here's a 737. Let's go ahead and try to intercept that. All right. We're close behind another CFM owning airplane. We don't like that. There will only be one CFM-56 engineer. It's only room for one. All right, so let's do some freaky here. Uh, yep. Open the missile doors. Yes, wonderful. Uh, I've, I've already... Oh. Oh, sorry. Oh, there you go. I already shot him down. That really didn't take long at all. Oh, whoops. Oh. I accidentally shot a weapon already. Oh, this is the button to do it. There you go. That's... Okay, hold up. Why are we not... Oh, God. No! Uh, no! No! Okay. All right, here we go. But hey, look at that. We've got very big, like, generally, I, in terms of the flight sim, this plane flies well. I mean, it needs a bit of a longer runway here for takeoff. 
But other than that, this plane flies... I, I didn't expect this to go well, honestly. Look at this. This is perfect. Now, something that this plane can do as well, of course, is land pretty quickly. Because unlike fighter jet engines, this is an airliner engine that has reverse thrust. So we've only we've kind we've only made the plane better, really. Let's bring out the flaps here. As you can see, they're coming out. We can even, I think, trigger yes, yeah, reverse thrust mid-flight. So landing on aircraft carriers, uh yeah, very easy. Although that's never been a problem. Look at that, and it still feels kind of, Okay, maybe the handling kind of really sucks now. The truth is, like, fighter jets are really easy to handle. Um, now it's kind of turned into... Uh, I see now. This plane kind of, uh, plane sucks. Yes, look at the amount of braking power we have because of the reverse strut. Oh, holy moly. Jesus, we just pulled a mid-air drift. All right, let's land our yard. That was too hard. Whoa, that was insanely hard, but no problem here, especially for the F-35 with the CFM-56 engine. I'm very proud. Holy moly. I think the physics might just be genuinely broken here. Gee, look at that. Yes, the F-35 would love reverse thrusters like that. But everybody, I do have one more trick up my sleeves. Ha, 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 ha. Everybody, um, this is the GE90 engine here. Uh, most powerful engine in the world. Mm, almost provides 90,000 pounds of thrust, so that's a lot. This plane is now um, like six times more powerful than the original one. So let's take a look. All right, so let's do it. Oh my, oh my God. Oh, whoa, it's kind of pushing the nose down a little bit. Yes, look at that. Now, oh. Yeah, the problem is this engine is so big as well that it, like that the drag that it brings also is quite detrimental. It's kind of like putting like a diesel truck engine, which has like a million horsepower and a million torques, on like a RC car. Like it's gen like it's generally stupid. This plane probably doesn't fly at all. Yeah, I mean spawn into midair. Uh, but yeah, spawning into midair is uh, it works. It's just a bit stupid. Um, and once again, this big heavy engine on our back doesn't allow us to fly very fast or very high, I think, either. So yeah, that's why military jet engines are so different to uh, airliner jet engines. This is absolutely a stupid experiment. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll see you guys tomorrow as always. Good night. And a special thanks goes out to my members, my supporters, Guns Killer, R27, James Deram, That Dude, Anime Gods of Gaming, Derek, Insider Plane, Nishijitsu Finer, Professional Jamal, Ryland Williams, and New the York. You've got beautiful names.